Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. Today I'm going to continue the build of the Oosnest Workbee Z1 Plus CNC and hopefully by the end of this video I will have all the mechanical assembly completed on this build. So to kick things off I'm going to start with the X gantry assembly so let's get into it. Okay, I now have the two Y plate assemblies that I made previously and I have two pieces of extrusion, extrusion E and B. Now, I would like to state at this stage, it's important that from now on, you build a machine on a level surface. Because if you have it on an on-level surface, you'll only be putting a twist into the machine. So, it's very important you actually have a level surface from now on. So, for this, I'm just going to use the two Y plates to hold the extrusion up roughly at the height that they need to be and I'm going to screw them in place with six little bolts on one end first. Okay, with that done now, I'm not going to tighten those fully just yet. I'm going to wait until I have both ends secured and then tighten them to make sure that there's no twist or anything in it. The next thing I want to do is introduce the X carriage onto the extrusion. And I'm just going to slide that the whole way across so that the weight is supported over there and I also need to add some T-nuts that slide into the top and bottom track in the extrusion. We want those at a later date but you won't be able to get them in if I don't do it now. And then it is just a case of repeating on this side with six more screws and then I can tighten up both ends. And now ensuring that both Y plates are sitting on the bench completely, you can now do the final tighten. Okay, with that now tightened, I can just move the X carriage back into a kind of a central position. And next up, we're going to be adding the lead screw. Okay, now I move on to the lead screw. So I have the lead screw for the X axis. So I feed that through the hole in the Y plate. I then add a flanged radial bearing, a rubber bushing, and a locking collar. And I then just slide the lead through screw until I hit the X carriage assembly and thread it through the nut blocks in the X carriage. And I'm just keeping the, the bearing and the locking collar and all just to this end as I screw it through. So I just continue to screw that through until it reaches the other Y plate. With the lead screw just at the Y plate, I add in the opposite direction, I add lock and collar, the rubber bush and the flanged radial bearing. And I then, let that out through the hole in the end of the Y plate. Now, 
On this end, this is to protrude 14 millimeter. So what I've done is I've just got my combination square, I've set it to 14 millimeter. So that once that sits level with the plate, I can lift the screw up to the square and that is 14 millimeter. And then you just let the radial bearing seat in the hole like that. And you just tighten up the lock collar, but you don't have to tighten it fully because it will be loosened again at a later stage. Okay, with those now in place and loosely tightened and the lead screw protruding 14 millimeter on this end, I am just going to go to the other side. I'm going to seat the radial bearing and loosely tighten the locking collar so that the lead screw can't move from side to side. Okay, with the other clamping collar now tightened on the lead screw, the lead screw can no longer move from side to side. So next on this side, which is the side that sticks out 14 millimeters, I'm going to add a nylon shoulder washer. It sits into the hole as well. A truss bearing housing washer. The truss bearing caged roller. And finally, the truss bearing shaft washer. And ensuring that those are all seated correctly together, you now push on a flexible coupler. And keeping all that seated together, you then just tighten the flexible coupler clamp first, like that. And then you can tighten the little grub screw in the flexible coupler as well. Like that. So that's this end of the carriage completed. The other end is going to be the very same, only instead of a flexible coupler, it is going to have another clamping collar. Next up, I have some corner angle pieces that are going to be going in the corner between the Y plate and the E extrusion just as a stiffener. And this is where the little T-nuts that I inserted previously come in. So just two little bolts hold each one. So firstly, you put one into the T-nut, like that, and then you push one out through the hole into the Y plate, a precision shim and a nylock nut. Like that. And then so there's another one on the bottom on this side and then two on the other side. I won't show you doing that once you've done one, it's simple enough. And lastly, on the X gantry is adding a stepper motor. And once again, the flat portion of the shaft on the stepper motor must be on the side of the group screw in the flexible coupler. So four bolts and four 40 mil spacers and just line it up and screw it in place. And then, as before, you then tighten the collar on the flexible coupler onto the shaft. And then lastly, you tighten the grub screw onto the shaft. Okay, that completes all the steps in the X gantry assembly. Now I'm going to move on to the base assembly. 
But first I just wanted to say again that I have left a playlist of the full series in the description of this video. And I have also left an affiliate link to the Oosnest website. So if you're considering buying a Workbee from Oosnest, if you use that link to make your purchase, it means that I get a small commission in return, which will help me with the channel. So let's move on with the base for the machine. Okay, the first thing I need to do is prepare all the angle brackets to hold the extrusion of the base together. Now these have four holes in them, so you have to add a bolt to each hole and then screw on a T-nut onto each nut. And I have 16 of these brackets to do. So once I have all those done, like this, I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, with all those now prepared, as you can see, there are enough set to the holes. So you can see these holes are further away from the inside corner than these ones. So the ones that are closest to the corner, that's the side of the angle bracket we're going to use to fix to the end of the extrusion. So all you do is line up your T-nuts into the slot on the end of extrusion C. Slide them on and keeping it level at the end of the extrusion, tighten it up. Now you don't have to tighten it up too tight because you might need it for adjustment once we get to the next stage. And then turn it over, you repeat the very same thing on the other side of the extrusion. And you end up with something like that. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to apply all the rest of them to the ends of the other pieces of extrusion and then we'll be setting it out to assemble it. Okay, I now have the four extrusions with the brackets on them laid on the bench and roughly spaced where they need to be. Now I will again say at this stage that you need to be doing this on a level surface or else you're only going to be creating a twist into the base of the machine. So the next thing I need to do is get my extrusion A for the front and another one for the back and slide it on over all the T-nuts the whole way across to the side. Okay, I now have those together. It was a little bit trickier than I thought to get all the little T-nuts to line up into the slot in the extrusions. But I now have the front and back extrusion on. I have the two side extrusions spaced in the 80 millimeters from the end, like it said in the instructions. And I have the two center rails um, divided equally between those. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty big machine. So I have spent a good bit of time getting this 100% square. So not only is it level, but it is also square. Now that's very important, because now we're moving on to the Y gantry assembly. And this is where the machine really begins to take shape. Okay, the first step on the Y gantry assembly is to prepare the Y end plates. So this is going to be similar to the base, where you put four bolts and four T-nuts onto each end plate. And the only thing that's important on this part is to make sure that you end up with two pairs. So you have two that'll be facing one direction and two in the other direction. And once that's done, then we can move on. So that's what's required for the end plates. So that's the four end plates now prepared. So now we can move on and reintroduce the X gantry. Okay, with the X gantry now laid back in on the bench, I actually have it laid up on two little blocks of timber just to keep it up. Because I'm on my own, 
I'm not going to be able to feed this onto the extrusions on either side of the machine. So I've kept that up so that I can feed the extrusion through the gantry when it's up on blocks, then I can remove the blocks. So you just feed the extrusion through on both sides, like that. And now I can lift it and take out the blocks. And then you line all the extrusion up on the four corners of the machine. Like that. So now we can actually start to attach the end plates. Okay, using the right end plate for this corner, you now line up the T-nuts with the extrusion and slide it into the slots. Like that. And then you screw the side rail extrusion to the end plate with four bolts. And with that done, you just keep the end plate perfectly flush on the corner of the machine, and then you tighten those four screws. And that's one corner now joined together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that on the other three. Okay, with the other three end plates now in place, I went ahead and I done the binding check. And that's where you move the carriage all the way to the back. You loosen off the screws on both sides into the front uh, extrusion. And you slide the carriage forward and then tighten them and do the same on the back. So that you know that the carriage is sliding without any interference or binding whatsoever. So I have now done that. The next step in the build is actually to introduce the lead screws into both Y axis and add the two stepper motors. Now I'm not gonna cover this in the video because it is exactly the same process as we used in the X gantry assembly. So the bearings and the shims, etc is going to be the very same on the two Y, so I don't need to repeat it again. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll come back then and we'll do the final part of the mechanical assembly. Okay, I now have the lead screws fitted to both sides of the machine, and I have also installed both stepper motors. And when I was at it, I added the little plates to cover the end of the extrusion front and back, and I also added the four little corner stiffeners on the four corners of the machine. So now we move on to the final part of the mechanical assembly and that's adding the router mount. Okay, all the pieces required to make the router mount are actually all contained in the one box for the router mount. Uh, so first off, we have the main assembly that we need to put together. So one, this has a, a slot or a groove in it that sits over the mount. And then you just add three bolts into that. And tighten them up. And next then, we need to add the bolts into the plate. And at each of them, we have to add a drop-in T-nut.
So you end up with something like that. And there is also a height reference tool that I've already added two bolts and two drop-in T-nuts to. So now it's just a case of offering all that up to the carriage and go from there. Okay, so firstly we have to attach the height reference tool. Now this is referenced the highway for a Makita or a Katsu router. But if you were going to be using a Mafel, you would actually be using it in this direction with this height, the smaller height being the height reference you want. But to do this, we're just putting this on temporary. So you just drop that in and hold it up tight to the bottom of the plate and just tighten it up like that. So now that is the height reference for the main mount. So I'm just turning all the T-nuts so that it will slot into the tracks like that. And making sure it's on the flat plus in the right direction. There are four holes in the bottom of the mount for to add a dust shoe. So you have to make sure that you keep those down. And then it's just a case of tightening each one and just have a look to make sure that the T-nut is actually turning and engaging and locking. Sometimes they don't. And if they don't, you just loosen it off and then turn it again. And the same on the bottom. And with that now in place, you can actually remove the height reference tool. But but this has markings on it, so you can actually use this as a height reference when you're setting up the machine, just as a handy little ruler to have around. So it's not just a case that you just need to throw it away. It will come in handy at a later date. And the last thing then, you have another bolt that goes through the front of the mount. Like that. And then you just get your router motor, drop it in, and just line it up with the bottom Play it on the axis and just lightly tighten it up. Don't over tighten. Like that. So that's the router mount and the router installed. Okay, that concludes the mechanical assembly portion of the build, and as you can see, it is really beginning to take shape. So, join me next time when I do the electrical assembly of the machine, and hopefully have the machine up and running under its own power. So, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button, and all that's left for me to say is, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.